What's up, everybody? This is Colonel Freeze here with another series from the PLO inaugural StarCraft II tournament. And we're going to get right down to it with the competing individuals here. In the bottom right-hand corner, the Green Terran is going to be Porkins, who I will refer to as Tycoon again for the rest of the match, as that is his PL and Waffle handle. And up in the top left-hand corner, we have Pro Protoss, rather, which is Falcoon. And Falcon's going to roll out here and, I believe, drop a pylon in his natural. Which is kind of weird, you don't really see that against Terran too often, but, you know. Why not? Tycoonigan's going to get to work on his supply depot, and Falcon's going to roll out with a decently early scout. And both of these players, I think Falcon is bronze, possibly silver. And Tycoonigan is gold, high gold, right on the verge of platinum, if I'm not mistaken. So a little bit of a, a skill mismatch between these two, but you never know. You never know. That's the thing with StarCraft 2 that does make it enjoyable. Sometimes you can punch above your weight, and sometimes you can punch much below it. As I tend to do when I lose six or seven games on the ladder to people I should not lose to. But, you know, just because I get six pulled like a scrub doesn't mean you guys have to. And, speaking of that, for the rest of this match, I'm going to try and point out some tips for newer players, those who are just starting the game, and uh, other members of the Pandemic Legion community who are trying to get better at StarCraft 2. And it does look like Falcon forgot about his probe and is going to lose it to an SCV. So that's, uh... Our first tip is, uh, don't forget about your probes, folks. Falcoon dropping a gateway in his base. I'm sorry, in his natural. He's continuing to drone up. He's got an assimilator. He's dropping another pylon. A very early pylon, but, you know, whatever. Tycoon again is getting his refinery. He's finishing that wall off and then the supply depot. And, uh, both players just doing the early game kind of maneuvering here. And speaking of uh, strange things, Falcon has decided to drop a second gateway instead of a cyber core. I don't know if that was a misclick or just uh, some weird machination in his head. Some previously unseen evil, but he does drop the cyber core now. Hey, there it is. Meanwhile, a second rack's coming from Tycoon again. And a tech lab coming out, so we're going to see Marauders here at some point. Only one refinery, though. And let's see what else is going on. Going in for a secondary scout with his SCV, and he's going to scout that gateway. Just pushing out a zealot. Uh, an odd choice versus Terran. Usually as a Protoss against Terran, you can kind of skip that first zealot. And either go with a stalker. Well, yeah, you should go with a stalker. So you can go and scout up his ramp and see what's going on. And a, his scouting SCV gets hosed as well as uh, Falcoon starts warp gate tech. A quick tip for people who are scouting, which should be all of you, but for newer players who are scouting, is that uh, you don't really want to go through their mineral line. You kind of want to go either around it, or in the event that you do stray into it and you get surrounded, what you can do is you can click on your probe, as I'm clicking on Falcon's probe right now, go to any other mineral patch in the map, and right click on it, and your probe will go straight through the other, the enemy's units and go to that mineral patch. So, that's a, a nice little tip that old workers, when told to mine somewhere, will go through other units if they can. And, yep, that Zelt's motoring around. We got a sentry, a stalker, out for Falcoon. And back here at the Terran base, Tycoonigan has dropped a command center. So we are going to see a 2 racks expand from Tycoonigan. Standard build, pretty much. I do like to see some uh, earlier pressure to support this build, but, uh... I don't think we're going to see that here. He seems to be very comfortable getting a bunker down, getting his uh, stim upgrades, and kind of, you know, playing the waiting game, which he can do because he's going to be ahead on Econ. Uh, Falcoon has three gates. He's just now getting warp gate tech. He's continuing manual production of units in his warp gate tech. And that's kind of strange because you don't really want to do that when you have warp gates available. Obviously, warp gates are faster than manual production. And he's also supply blocked, so a lot of mistakes coming out from Falcon. And you are seeing that bronze slash silver level of uh, 
not really knowing what much what's going on and just kind of making stuff and seeing what happens. Back here at Tycoonigan's base, he's transformed, or is in the process of transforming his command center into an orbital. And we are going to see it lift off and take over that mineral patch in a bit. But he is going to drop a third Rex and not seeing the command center lift off. Kind of want to see that in a more timely manner. I guess we'll just stare at it until it does what we want it to do. That works, right? A second bunker being put down, so he's getting ready to play defensively a little bit. I mean, since he scouted the enemy's base more recently than uh, Falcon to scout is his, he knows that the enemy's uh, natural expansion is not out yet, or at least significantly delayed. And we do see Falcon put down that Nexus now, but it's, you know, it's eight minutes. He already has his completed, but Tycoonigan is making SCVs out of his command center, so that's kind of weird. I have n really no idea what's going on there. Must be a mistake of some sort. Because that uh, that orbital needs to lift up and actually assume mining position in the natural before making SCVs. But whatever. Other than that, Tycoonigan is researching, or about to achieve the research on concussive shells. He's getting plus one weapons. He's pushing out more marauders, more marines. Pretty much standard. Getting a, getting a few more supply depots, as he is about to be supply blocked. And that command center, there we go. He's gonna land, he's gonna transfer some SCVs, he's gonna get his... As Jim Raider would say, he's going to kick his mineral production into overdrive. And we do see a push from Falcon. Unfortunately, that push is without a proxy pilot of any kind, so there will be no reinforcements coming for him. He's gonna break down these rocks, but... Checking from Porkins, I mean, Tycoonigan's point of view, he very clearly sees what's going on there. So he's gonna know that, uh... Some sort of attack is on the way, and judging by the rate at which those minerals are not going down, not a substantial attack at all. Let's see, we got uh, two to do six stalkers, one zealot, one sentry. That zealot's gonna get hosed by marines from marauders, and he's gonna charge up the ramp for some reason into the stem, and this is not going to end well for Falcon at all. A few marines go down, but the entirety of the Protoss army is now dead. And uh, too little too late, these proxy pylons are coming into existence, and they are going to die one by one. As Tycoon again marches towards Falcon's base, and no production whatsoever coming out of Falcon. Okay, there we see some sentries, but he only has three gates. Finally did get a robo, but nothing coming out of it, so... This game is about to be over. You have to believe as Tycoon again comes in... And all you really need to know is by looking at the supply difference, Tycoonigan is sitting at 72, now 74, Falcon at 37. He's trying to chrono his gates, but he's not going to get anything in time. And there they go, the Zealot's down the ramp, getting hosed. T decent force fields, but he really needed a third one to keep them out, and too many get through. And once again, an entire Falcon army has been laid to waste, and that's the game. As Tycoonigan wins decisively the first game in the set, and Falcon is going to be pressed up against a wall in this best of three elimination. So we will see in the next game, which I will be doing shortly, who wins and who loses and who advances to the next round of the PO StarCraft II tournament. So stay tuned, folks.